All right, now here's a third option, and it's a lot cheaper, and it, a lot of people haven't thought of one of these, and it's an inverter for your car, but it's a heavy-duty one. It goes onto the battery, and I would recommend not running this off the battery because it's going to drain the battery. I would recommend running this while you're running your engine. Now, your engine can idle if it's on a fuel tank, a uh, full tank, for probably at least a day, probably several days maybe, and large trucks and diesels idle usually a lot more efficiently. So those can likely idle for several days. The reason I like having an inverter and using your car as a generator is that the gas, well, it's going to be fresher because you're cycling it out, you're driving your car more than you're using your generator. And the gas tank is going to be much larger on your car than it is on your generator. It's also a lot quieter. It's not going to draw as much attention, although it still will. And while you're running your engine to power your inverter, there's a lot of other things you can do. You can power all of your USB devices, which will come directly from 12 volts, so it's a lot more efficient. And you can use your car as an emergency heater or emergency air conditioner. You can huddle in your car. You can sleep in your car if you have no power, if it's extreme weather at your house. Your car, it's your shelter. You can obviously leave and bring this with you. You'll have mobile power. But even if you are just sheltering in place, consider your car. And the more people you pile into it, the warmer it's going to get, which could be a good thing if it's very cold outside. You can also keep your emergency supplies, you know, just the essentials, in your car on a top box, for example. So it's one less thing you have to worry about packing if you have to leave. I prefer having a four-wheel drive as an emergency escape vehicle. just gives you more options for emergency egress when the roads are congested or totally impassable. It has greater ground clearance, so you're going to be less susceptible to damage when there's debris all over the road. And it's generally larger. And an SUV makes it a lot easier to sleep in in the back. So definitely have a sleeping bag in there. You know, a sleeping bag is a blanket, but it's a lot more than just a blanket. Basically, every sleeping bag is a blanket. Not every blanket is a sleeping bag. And if you're in an environment where you're trying to produce heat, well, there's a lot more efficient ways to produce heat than just running your engine. You can use more layers, obviously, and a sleeping bag redirects the heat in that immediate vicinity back towards you rather than heating the whole cabin. So what you have to worry about and watch out for on these inverters is the wires that they come with are usually pretty small in terms of high gauge number, which means very thin wire. So to be extra safe, I made these. one ought overkill, totally overkill, but not gonna melt. You can overload the generator and it'll probably shut off, but you're not gonna have a critical weak point being the wires. So here's why I did this. These, these melted. It melted the housing, it melted the original wires that were on here. Uh, this is a different one, but still, same flimsy gauge wires. And I'm going to show you this. So to power it down, and you can see it's producing 2 watts. Uh, it's showing that there's 12.5 volts on the battery, which is good. That's healthy. Uh, producing 115 volts. This is pure sine wave, so that's just like the house. I'm going to power it off. If we put it over here, just be careful, because once you start the engine, which you should, you're going to have to be mindful of the belts, the fans, you don't want these wires getting caught in that for obvious reasons. So over here, we can trace the extension cord down. And move these out of the way. All right, so we can trace the extension cord down. And then we're powering our reel. And this is just a simple demonstration of how this works, right? So we're taking power from the forerunner. We have our power extension cord here. It's you know it's got its own switch and its own safety breaker. Okay, so extra precaution there. And then we can cook basically from the power generating from our car. So you know when we turn this on to let's say quick rice start it, we can go back and monitor how many watts we're generating, 
See, now it's 719 watts, 720 watts. It's spooling up, and now, you know, the voltage is dropping very quickly on the battery, so you gotta be careful about that. So what I'm gonna do is start up the engine, make sure nothing here is gonna get tangled. The extension cord and the power cords are not gonna get tangled. Okay, so it's, it's losing power quickly. All right, you can see here now, the voltage is starting to go back up, 11.6. But we have 750 watts of output right now, okay? So that's more than we could get from the Yeti. That's a Yeti 400, it's only rated at 400 watts. It wouldn't be able to power this. But now you can see the, the volts are starting to climb again. You don't want that to ever get below 11.2. So it's, it's climbing and 11.7, so that's why if you're gonna use one of these things, you really wanna run your engine while you're running this, because it's gonna drain the battery. But if it's running the engine, it should be fine. Okay, okay now it's going into a, a nice soft idle. You can leave that here. You know, it's not an ideal place to leave this, but. And, you know, we have this running it's definitely, oh yeah, it's definitely hot in there. Yeah, just to show you, yeah, it's sizzling. I don't know if you can see that, but, okay, so that's the proof of concept. So we have the inverter, have gas generator, and thanks Ned. <laughs>